What's up everybody, it's your friendly neighborhood Dooley Ray, and this is the Champa Dex, a series in which I take the abilities and uses of characters in this game, give them ratings, give them a total score, tell you how to use that character, and then see how they line up compared to everybody else in this game. It's a lot of fun for me to do, and hopefully it's fun for you to watch as well. Today we're going to be taking a look at Luke Cage. If you missed the first episode of this, I, I made a video on Dr. Voodoo. There will be a card up in the corner where you can click on and go watch that if you want to. The way this works is I take 10 different aspects of a character, the ones that you see here on the screen, and I rate them on a scale of 0 to 3. 0 being the worst, 3 being the best, 1 being average, and 2 being good. Once I rate all the categories, the character will have a total score which we will use to compare them to other characters in this game. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the Champadex here on Luke Cage. And to start things off, we're going to go ahead and talk about damage. As far as Luke Cage goes, he got a buff earlier this year that significantly increased the amount of damage that he is able to do. We used to call him Mr. Pillow Fist because he used to hit like a wet noodle. He no longer does that. His base attack isn't really that impressive, and to be totally honest, all of his base stats here are just pretty average. Uh, he, he might have a bit more armor rating than a couple of characters, but uh, as far as I'm aware, those are pretty average. Uh, his abilities, though, are where he gets a large chunk of damage. And the way he does this is if you will take a look here, it says Luke Cage gains whatever attack rating for each debuff on the opponent, depending on how high you have him rated. And I unfortunately only have a rank 4, 4 star. He's awakened. Um, I don't have a 5 star or a 6 star or anything, but he is available at those levels. And oh boy, can he do some damage. What this ability does for him though is every time you put a debuff on the opponent you will be increasing your attack and on your light attacks with Luke Cage every single hit that you have has a 30% chance to put an exhaust debuff on your opponent and as you stack these debuffs up you'll be doing more and more and more damage. In my mind, to be a level 3 damage character, you need to be able to deal an amount of damage that will allow you to take on a character like the Realm of Legends Winter Soldier, a Labyrinth of Legends character even, without too much difficulty. I mean, it'll still be difficult, it's the Labyrinth of Legends, or, or maybe a uh, Alliance Quest or Alliance War Boss, where you're on a timer and you need to deal a large amount of damage in a very short amount of time. And when it comes to Luke Cage, the amount of damage that he deals is pretty impressive. But unfortunately, it's not enough for me to rate him at that level 3 level. It is above average. He does get the extra buffs to his attack rating for every single debuff that he puts on the opponent. So for that, I rate him at a level 2. That brings his score up to a 2. And we move on to the next category, which is sustainability. Now when I think of sustainability, I think of characters that have regen, who will be able to save you units and potions because they're getting their life back as you use them in different fights. But there's more to sustainability than just that. Sustainability is not just being able to get your life back, it's being able to not even lose that life in the first place. And when it comes to Luke Cage, there are very few characters that can compare when it comes to not losing your life. First of all, he has quite an impressive amount of physical resistance against non-crit hits. So for every hit that you take when you make a mistake, if it's not a critical hit, then you are taking much less damage than you normally would. Beyond that, his awakened ability is what's really going to save you. It's called Tough It Out, and what it does is allow you to go indestructible for a certain amount of time. It'll go on to a cooldown so that you'll be able to go indestructible multiple times throughout a fight. And this is awesome because pre-Luke Cage buff, he was only able to do this one time per fight. So if you messed up, you slipped up one time, you got hit, boom, your indestructible was gone for the entire fight. But now, he's able to refresh this ability, kind of like uh, Iceman's ice armor and with it you can you can take special threes without taking damage uh, if you slip up at all it's got your back and granted it's not the most sustainable ability and what I mean by this is it is on a timer and that timer is actually pretty long with my Luke Cage here at SIG 40 it takes about 40 seconds for the uh, indestructible to reset so sometimes that's not enough to uh, become indestructible before you get hit by another special three but hopefully you'll be able to control your opponent's power a little bit better and you won't have to deal with more special threes than you can handle it's just nice to know that you have this ability backing you up that if you mess up just a little bit 
you're protected, just for a second. For this ability, I give Luke Cage a level 2 in sustainability, bringing his total score up to 4, and we move on to the next category, which is power control. And when it comes to Luke Cage, you may not have realized this before, but he does actually have a little bit of a way to control power on some opponents. The exhaustion debuffs that he puts on with his light attacks reduce the potency of power gain effects by 25%. So when you're fighting opponents like Hyperion, Doctor Strange, Loki, anybody who has a bit of a passive power gain or a power gain buff, you'll be able to at least slow down the rate at which they get their power. At the end of the day though, it is just a bit of neat information. It really doesn't do too much for you and it's a bit hard to manage and control as well. So for those reasons, there's nothing there's nothing else that really sets Luke Cage above anybody else when it comes to power control and I rate him at a level 1 for that. This takes his total score to a 5, and we move on to his awakened ability. How good is it, and how necessary is it for him to have it to be a good character? I know we just talked about this, so we can make it pretty quick. Luke Cage goes indestructible when he gets hit, lasts for a certain amount of time, and then it goes onto a timer, and once that timer is done, he can go indestructible again. So this helps you if you slip up in a combo, you take a combo to the face, you take a special 3, mess up, He's got your back. He's going to be indestructible. You're not going to take any damage. This can save you in more ways than you could possibly imagine. With all of his abilities in mind, I would say that being able to go indestructible is one of the most important. So I give this a level 2 rating. You may be curious why it's not a level 3. I put a bit of thought into this and I decided that a level 3 awakened ability should be one that you are willing to put a generic awakening gem into because it adds so much to the character. And when it comes to Luke Cage, I just don't think that there's enough there to uh, be deserving of a generic awakening gem but definitely I would say worth a science awakening gem if you have one of those laying around go ahead and throw it in Luke Cage because that indestructible ability can save you many many times. That brings his total score up to 7 and we move on to the next category which is other utility and as far as Luke Cage's utility goes I mean there's not a whole lot here his abilities are pretty simple, you just you hit the opponent and the more you hit them the more chances you have to put exhaust debuffs on them and then the harder you hit Seems pretty cool, right? Well, there's actually more to it than that. Just a little bit, though. Don't don't get too worked up. First of all, he's bleed immune, which can be helpful in quite a few matchups that you may find yourself in. And not only that, but he does have some ability accuracy reduction that he can apply on the opponent with the exhaust debuffs and some special attacks that he throws. On the special attack too, he uses all of the debuffs, the exhaustion debuffs that he has on the opponent, and replaces it with a concussion debuff. And that reduces the opponent's ability accuracy by 25% for every debuff that you have converted and it lasts for 13 seconds long. So if you manage to get 4 exhausts on the opponent and you throw a special 2, you are going to be shutting down all of their abilities and I think that is a nice bit of utility indeed. So I would say in total his other utility category here, <laughs> I give it a level 2 rating. It's, it's not the best that you could find in a character but man, it can be helpful in certain situations. If it was a bit more reliable, I could give it a level 3, but because the exhaust debuffs are only a 30% chance to apply, it's kind of unpredictable when you're going to actually put the debuffs on the opponent, so sometimes it works for you, sometimes it doesn't, it's kind of based on RNG, so you leave it up to fate a little bit, and you could get wrecked, or you could uh, end up on top. But that goes ahead and brings his score to 9, and we move on to his synergies, which I'll just come out and say... <laughs> Are a level one. There's nothing, nothing above average here. This is this is the way that most of the old characters are. Just the synergies add some things to the characters: crit, uh, armor, block proficiency. But it doesn't do anything crazy. It doesn't add any new abilities to the character. So Luke Cage's synergies are just like everybody else's. They're most most characters, older characters, and they're average. Which brings his score up to 10, and we move on to his use in Alliance Quest. In Alliance Quest, I think he's a pretty useful character. He's got bleed immunity, which can be helpful in some matchups. I know there's a Morningstar boss in Map 5, and there are other matchups as well where it's, it's nice to have a character who doesn't bleed. He's also got that indestructible that's going to be backing you up. If you slip up, you take a special attack, you take a combo. He'll protect you from that, and then he's got quite a bit of damage as well when you stack up those exhaust debuffs. He's also got the concussion he can put on if you ever need to reduce a character's ability accuracy. So I give his rating in AQ a level 2. He's not the best possible character you could use, but man, he's pretty good. 
And that'll bring his score up to a 12, and we move on to his use in Alliance War Offense. And for his use in Alliance War Offense, I give him a level 2. I say he's not one of the best characters he can use, but he is very good. He's got the concussion sometimes that works. He's got the indestructible, which is very important. Not dying in Alliance War is mission numero uno. And not only that, but he can do a bit of damage when he stacks up those exhaust debuffs as well. It's not super reliable, so sometimes you may not be doing as much damage as you would like, but he's got bleed immunity, and I, he's, he's got the utility for it. I would say he, he's pretty good. As well, against Mystic characters, he's got the class advantage. That's another bonus. So yeah, level 2. That's where we'll leave him. And that brings the score up to 14, and we move on to Alliance War Defense in which Luke Cage is nothing special. He's a level one, he's average. He does have that indestructible that will be activating throughout the fight, but usually the fight is over fast enough for the uh, the opponents you're facing that they won't really have to deal with too much. Or if you if you ever face a Luke Cage in Alliance War, hopefully you don't die because there's really no reason. He's got the indestructible, so that'll make the fight last just a couple seconds longer. But other than that, there's nothing special. So that brings his score up to 15, and we move on to his use in general questing. General questing is a little bit different from everything else, because there's so many different nodes, so many different uses that you need. And because Luke Cage is bleed immune, because he's got that indestructible, he can do the damage, he's got concussion, he can shut down people's abilities. I, I give him a level 3. I say he's a very, very good character to have, to take into pretty much any quest you can find. I don't know of many people who've used him to fight against the Collector, but I am sure that he is a valid option because he can tank a couple of special attacks if you need him to. Alright, and I'm actually adding this later on when I'm going back editing the video. I've just, I've had time to think about it, and the more I played with Luke Cage, the more I liked it. If this annoyed you, I'm very sorry, but there's just one change I've got to make, and it's the sustainability number here. I've got to change it to a level 3. I had it at a level 2, because I thought uh, he needed a bit of regen to make him reach that level 3, but he doesn't need that regen. Any character that can tank a special 3, not take any damage, and just have that indestructible to back you up, it feels so good, and it's a level 3, in my opinion. So that's actually going to kick his score up to 19. And let's go ahead and talk about where that puts him compared to other characters in this game. Now, I've made a revision since my last video. It was suggested to me in the comments that I should uh, rethink my uh, rating system at the end here. So what I said before was an S-Class hero was top of the top, somebody you want to take to rank 5 as a 5-star, and somebody pointed out that Dr. Voodoo is probably not one of the best options <laughs> as, a, as a rank 5 5-star, five and I kind of agree. I haven't seen many people with him as a rank 5, and I think it's uh, more fitting that you keep him as a rank 4 5-star while you rank up better options. So because of this, I've taken another look at where are great characters, and from now on, at least until I decide to change it again, I guess. <laughs> the S class is any character with a 23 rating or higher. An A class is 18 to 22. A B class is 14 to 17. And a C class hero is anything less than 13. So obviously S class is the best of the best. And C class is the worst of the worst. Arena fodder trash. <laughs> so Luke Cage is an A class hero. Champion! It's Dark Spidey! And he's still rated below Dr. Voodoo. He's not quite as good, but I would still say he's a valid option for a rank 4 as a 5 star. Maybe not a rank 5 five star. No, a couple of people have done that, and kudos to you. That's pretty cool. Congratulations on picking somebody unique. Uh, but I would say I, I really wouldn't be inclined to take him to rank 5 as a 5 star. And with that said, I think that's about everything that I wanted to get across. If you think I missed anything with Luke Cage here, you can go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. If you have any questions or anything, you're welcome to leave those as well. I'll be happy to help you out. And if you would be so kind as to leave a like on this video to let me know that you watched it and let me know that you actually liked it. <laughs> I mean, don't like it if you didn't like it. I don't want you to lie to me, but I'm putting a lot of work into this. So if you could if you could give me constructive criticism, I'll take it. And I will I'm I'm working to improve this and I'm happy to uh, take any advice that you have for me, but yeah, that's all I have for you today. So until I see you next, you guys hang in there. May the RNG be with you, and peace out. Peace out.